Ladies and gentlemen, with all the love and joy in our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hand together for Jimmy Terry. Can we appreciate him? The first thing I want to say is the fact that you do not know you are asleep until you wake up. Do you agree with me? You cannot tell me the exact time that you slept off. But the only time that you can know that you slept is when you wake up. Now, there are different degrees of sleep. Who knows what I'm, what I'm talking about? There's one kind of sleep we call nap. Who knows how to take a nap? Now, when you take a nap, what usually happens is that if you hear some sort of slight sound, it's likely that you can wake up. Then we have sleep, okay? And so that one is typically we go to the bed, we wake up 5 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever. But there's one called deep sleep. Who knows deep sleep? Deep sleep is the one that when you wake up, you ask yourself, where am I in the world? I remember been there before. You are wondering what exactly is going on. But there's another one that I believe, you know, a lot of people are in, not necessarily in the hospital, but it's what I call a coma. Now, the coma is something nobody ever wants to experience. Medically speaking, they say that they are sleeping, but the brain is not functioning. But you see, one thing that is peculiar to all these four words I've just shared with you is that each person going through any of them is at a different level of awareness. The person that is in a coma cannot know what is going on around them. The person in a deep sleep, you can shift the building. Sometimes they will not even know what's going on. Maybe what can wake them up is a very hard slap. Who knows what I'm talking about? Please understand that every single person in this place is at a certain level of awareness. The same way that a person is taking a nap, sometimes you can pick some signal that there's something going on around you. You open your eyes. But you see, the truth about it is that I'm using sleep as an analogy. Everybody in this room is at a degree of awareness. Now let's practice this. We do this in many events. Can we all raise our right hand up? Raise your right hand up. Raise your right hand up, everybody. Can we do that quickly? Now point your pointing finger. Point that up also. That's the second finger. Point it up, point it up, point it up. Are you ready? Now quickly touch your nose. Touch your nose. All right. Are we good? Are we good on that? Now touch your ears. Touch your ears. All right. Now I said touch your ears and somebody was touching their what? Chin. Are we together? Anybody in that category? Why is that? The reason is because you are responding to what? What you are seeing. Are we together on that? No, don't feel bad. It happens to most people. Someone like, how could I? No, no, no. It simply is about the degree of awareness that you have. Now let me say this to you. That the difference in men in many instances is the degree of awareness that they have. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there is a difference between what is happening and what is going on. There's a difference between what is happening and what is going on. Let me use an analogy. One time I was going to Uyo, that's around where Ubong is from. And um, I got to the airport just before 11 a.m. And I said, I'm here for my flight to Uyo. And the lady says, oh, the two o'clock flight. I said, no, it's the 11 a.m. flight. And she says, no, the two o'clock flight. I said, my flight, look at it, it's 11 a.m. And then I realized that the flight had been moved from what? 11 to 2. I noticed something just about 2 o'clock. Some people were strolling in just before 2. Now, they did not move the plane or the flight before I walked in. It had been moved already, but I was not aware. A lot of people are exerting themselves. They are working hard. And I can tell you, today you know that hard work does not necessarily translate to success. Your degree of awareness can determine how effective you are. Businesses today are doing well to a very large extent to the degree to which they are aware. And I want to say this to you, if you'll be humble enough to take it from me, that if you can improve the level of your awareness, your life will tremendously improve. Now, think about it this way. That if you had more experiences that wake you up early, you will move faster in life. Now, thinkation is designed to wake you up. Thinkation is designed to make you aware. There is so much going on in Nigeria, as I'm speaking to you today, 
Look, I believe personally that lack is simply an expression of lack of awareness. The money you are looking for for your business is available, you just don't know where it is. The information you require to take you to your next level in your career, it is available. The only problem you have is that you are not aware of it. Now, I'm not going to stick to my slides, but I want to talk about transitions quickly because that's what I've been asked to speak about. What does it mean to be in a transition? If I start at point A and I'm going to point B, transition speaks essentially about the period and the experience that you have moving from point A to point B. Now, most of you have a dream car. Anybody here interested in any Range Rover Sport? Anybody? God is counting. I'm just asking the new one, the latest one. What about a Bentley? I'm even moving ahead to a private jet. Anybody with me? Private jet. Is that okay? Now, the beauty of a private jet is not in parking it. It's in transitions. Therefore, your life, the beauty of your life cannot be experienced until you are moving. A lot of people are packed private jets in hangars. And in fact, they begin to have a community of private jets, you know, whatever, and discuss how well they are packed. Nobody celebrates a packed private jet. It is one that is moving. Now, this is 2020. It's a new year already. My question is, what are you doing about the year? Let me ask you this. If I played your life in a video from January 1 to today, will I be impressed? And what you don't understand is that the velocity with which you are moving at the beginning of the year is going to take you to the air. So your dreams can only be achieved to the degree to which you are hungry for those goals. We are talking about breaking the rules. Somebody said to me, Upon, what did he eat? Everywhere, dedication, dedication. The same way we saw someone who posted around, we are seeing dedication around. But let me say this to you. What is driving him is his hunger. And I'm saying this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want to succeed in life, at least succeed for your children. This is the generation that our children will question our failures. In our parents' time, we could not afford to walk up to them and ask them why our neighbor um, has a tree growing money. But in our own days, our children will ask questions from us. And I'm saying to you, it will have been a waste of time for you to come today and go back the same. Let me say this to you, and I'm very practical because you know, they say some of we motivational speakers, our job is to inspire, to aspire, to perspire. Well, I would like you to know that if you're not inspired, you will perspire and you will not aspire. Is that okay? But this is what I'm going to. I'm saying that this program has been designed for you to move from being audience in 2020 to panelists in 2021. That's what it's being designed for. And you will never make that jump you have a regular life so the question is what are you going to do to improve your awareness there is so much going on in the world today i spoke at an event earlier today to career people and i'll share with them that people don't understand the concept of evolution and that there's a simple model of evolution that says that we move from chaos to stability to chaos to stability and what has happened was that in our parents' generation, when they will tell you that when you come out from school, that there's a job waiting for you, that was a period of stability. The problem with stability is that it causes stagnancy. That's where you get your comfort zone. But let me say this to you. After a period of stability, stagnancy, somebody will come and disrupt it. And then we now get into a cycle of chaos. I love chaos because chaos speaks about opportunity. You heard about Sir Alex speaking about how he started everything he has done. It was always identifying the opportunity that is in chaos. So my question is this. You see, you don't have to change Nigeria. You have to change where you stay. Change the organization that you work with. What are you going to do to solve problems where you work? What are you going to do with your business to take this forward? I'm saying this because there's a shift where the underdogs are going to become the ones leading very soon. It's happening already. And you see, one thing that I'm seeing already is a lot of people, because they realize they can no longer compete, they are leaving the race and going to sit down somewhere. I'm 41 years old. And I realized some time ago, now, yes, you see, because one of the problems about having some degree of accolade is you can start sitting down and listen to people clapping for you. 
But I got to a point and I said to myself, I have to reinvent myself. I'm happy about whatever I've done in Nigeria, but what about Africa? What about the world? Ladies and gentlemen, you can't afford to stand in the same place. In the world we are living in, if you stand somewhere, you are going backwards. You have to be intentional. So what are the things I want to advise, and I'm going to end with this. A few capabilities that will help you to transition. I didn't really look at my notes because of time. Maybe I should share this one quick thing before this. In 2009 or 2008, I was about 30 years old. And um, I was the head of recruitment for United Bank for Africa. I was a senior manager in the banking industry. And um, I was earning good pay. Then I moved from UBA. I moved to bank PHP then. I became head of recruitment for the bank. I was earning then 9 20,000 naira per month as salary. Minus benefits. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in 2008, sorry, in 2020, if you're earning 9 20,000 per month, you're okay. If you say no, you must make sure you have it in your pocket. Good. That means that you have money in your pocket. That's fine. But I'm saying this, that as at that time I was earning that, it was enough for me to decide to sit down and enjoy myself. They had given me a mortgage at body house at the age of 29 in a nice estate, paying mortgage for 4% per annum, what you will not get on the commercial market. It was okay. And then, all of a sudden, I realized that I would go to work but something inside of me wanted more. I wasn't sure what it was. Now, many of you know one of my mentors, Philad Dotre, and all that. He came to UBA to speak. When he finished speaking, I said to myself, what this man is is what I want to be. Now, what I'd done was that I made a decision to leave point A to point B. You guys are celebrating point B, but let me take you back to point A. The first thing I had to do was to sell my house and return the money to the bank. Because you see, when you step out of banking, the rate moves from 4% to 22%. And so the only way you can keep it is to stay there. But I knew I had to leave what was comfortable for what was possible. And so I made the choice. I moved from a four-bedroom duplex in Omoli Estate. And I sold the house, returned the money to the bank. And I moved to a three-bedroom flat in Magodo. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you will say is, what will people say? Let me teach you something. People will say, no matter what you do. So you better do what you have to do. So we made that move. And then I had this business plan that was going to deliver 22 million naira profit in the first year. <laughs> Hear me. I moved from 920k per month to the just shall live by faith. What I mean by the just shall live by faith was that I did not know what will be it tomorrow. And it was easy at that point to say, maybe I should go backwards. But I tasted the future. It was sweeter than where I was. If your life wants to change, go and taste where you want to go to. You won't go back. And so, I sold the house. I lost the income. And I started from the scratch. Let me tell you about transitions. And I'm not asking you to go and sell anything. I'm saying pay the price for what you really want. Don't sit down. See, this week I went back to one of the banks where I worked. And when I resigned in 2010, one guy said to me, he said, Jimmy, this thing you are doing, one day I will do it. I went to the company. He's still in the same position, the same floor, 10 years after. And was telling me I will do it. He will do it though. And his children will suffer for it. So I had to make that choice. 2011 was my worst year. Some of you have heard my story. Follow me online. It was tough. I wasn't working. I was struggling, posting, doing everything on Twitter. But I was getting a award, but no reward. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? But I've learned that, you see, when a plane is in turbulence, you don't turn back. You keep pushing till you get where you're going to. And that's what happened. By 2012, I got the first award out there consulting forever for career. From there, a social media award, and it began to look like it. So today, people say, Oh, Jimmy Tewe is one of the speakers and all that. You need to know where I'm coming from. I committed through my transition. This is the last thing I'm going to say to you, hopefully. Where it should be. If you are not in transition, you are dying. You see, because the way you are designed is that once you see something that you like, you go for it. But many people, and I think that, you know, I'm Caroline spoke about it, they stop because of fear. What if, what if, 
And you see, somebody said to me, Jimmy, how would you pay your children's school fees? I said, I will find out. I will find out. And I'll be open with you. There were some days when we could not pay the fees and the school was threatening that they would chase my kids out. But on social media, I was a public speaker. You need to know how to not or tie well, even though wind is blowing. And that kept going on. And I will tell you, there were some days when my rent was due. And I will look boldly at the man and tell him, I will pay your money. Inside, I'm like, Lord, help me. But things have changed today. I'm saying that the rate of flux in the world is so fast that if you stay in one place, you will be behind. I'm saying that it is time for you to answer the dream that is on the inside of you. I'm saying to you that we will not celebrate you for being regular. We will only celebrate you for pursuing the possibilities that you carry in your heart. I'm not asking you to do something mad. But I think it's only crazy people that do big things. I think so. Look, I'm tired of going to programs. In fact, let me say this. I'm looking at all your faces. If I see you in Thinkation 2021 and you're on the same level, I will tell them to chase you out. You wasted my time. It's, 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 not, it's not sufficient to hear these things and be inspired. You must do something. And can I say, say, say this to you? Sometimes it will be tough. What are the things that will help you? You need the right association. Ubong is doing amazing things, but many of you don't know that Ubong started in 2017. Less than three years ago, practically speaking. But he pursued what it is that he wanted. He had support around him. He had the vision. He committed. Sometimes when I meet Ubong and he's telling me what he's reading, I go and read. 2020, you can't afford. You see, some people are playing with their life already. You have watched all these series this year. I'm telling you, you are not going far. It's not the cause. I'm telling you because you are, you are now a master of Siri. But your life has no series in it. You have to adjust something. You have to change something. You have to let go of something, even this one thing. You have to determine and say, you know what, this thing, I will become it. I will do it. I spoke to somebody, she's going to Canada, and I don't care where you go in the world, just pray as you are going. But this is why I'm saying this to you. Because our broad is not above. Have you heard me? I'm not going there right now. This is where I'm going to. Never lose your dream. It is actually your possibilities calling out to you. It is what you can be that you have not become. That is saying, please don't abandon me. I'm telling you something. The people that chase their dreams in this generation are the ones that will stand out. There's no more way. The, the seven keys to success. There are some pillars, but the keys, they have changed. You are going to have to build and weld your own key and find a way to make what you believe become a reality. It is when you do that that we will now give you permission to be celebrated in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come here to waste your time. I hope you've learned something. Trust me, the world is waiting for you. Go and be great. God bless you.